Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a simple monkey fist jig. Well, on last week's show, we had something a little bit different and ended up making a FID or a lacing needle, which is an accessory uh, for working with paracord and keeping in that theme of something different and moving on with a little bit more of a paracord project. We're going to be making a monkey fist today. And if you don't know what a monkey fist is, <clears throat> it's one of these. And it's just a special knot and a, a certain technique used with paracord and it makes this kind of cool ball and it's called a monkey fist. Now, for the small ones, um, it's easier just to make them in your hand sort of thing as far as I'm concerned. But I'm going to be using an, a one inch core in my monkey fist today and for that I prefer to use a little jig to hold everything in place. And that's where we're going to start today's show with making that jig. Well, there are many different versions of a jig to make a monkey fist. And this is an extremely simple one. And really, it's, um, it's, it's not hard to do. I've got two pieces of scrap pine here. They're three quarters of an inch thick. They're three inches wide and five and three quarters inches long. The measurements really aren't that important, but what you want to end up with at the end is something that goes together, something like this. And your monkey fist is made um, on the upright part of your jig. So you want to do a little bit of layout and the layout is as simple as simple can be. Take yourself a combination square or anything that'll give you a 45 degree and you want to, from the corner of your board up here, you just want to mark a diagonal line at 45 degrees right across it like that. And after you're done with that one, do the same thing on the other side of the board. Line it up with your corner and give yourself don't break your pencil like I just did, but give yourself a 45 degree line and you should end up with an X. And that X is nothing more than reference lines for where you're going to be drilling some holes. And now we're going to uh, move forward with marking those holes. Well, we've got some quarter inch dowel and you're going to need four pieces of dowel approximately six inches long. And what these are going to do is they're going to hold the core of your monkey fist, which in this case for me is a one inch marble. Thanks for the marble, Joyce. Anyway, we're going to need to drill four holes on this X in such a way so that our dowels can be inserted to hold our marble in the middle. So you can adjust your measurements here however you like depending on the core or whatever size you're using for the middle. So for this, from the center point here, we know our marble is at um, one inch. So you want to come out half that dimension, so that'll be half inch, and then whatever the half of your dowel is. And in this case, it's a quarter inch dowel, so you want to come out another five, or sorry, another one eighth, which would be the center of your dowel. And that's where you will be drilling quarter inch holes, five eighths out from the center at each of these four points. And by doing that, that will be able to allow you to sit your marble perfectly in the middle. So whatever you're using, whatever size you're using, all you have to do is adjust a little bit and make your provisions. So from the center of whatever size, half that dimension out and then half again of your dowel size and drill. And you'll end up with four posts that will hold your marble or your core tightly where you need it to be. Now you can see I've got the board here and I have driven my four quarter inch dowels so that they're flush with the back of this piece. And you've got them sticking up and your marble now or your core 
should fit nicely inside there, just like that. And it holds it in place for you, frees up your hands and allows you to be able to work on the knot that you're doing. Now, if you measured carefully, you should have a nice tight fit like what I have, but it's very easy to remove it. It's not uh, a crazy tight fit, but it will hold it firmly in place. So the next thing that you want to do is you want to mount this board here to your base. And it's as simple as drilling a couple pilot holes and driving a couple screws up through the base. And um, that's basically it. So let's do that. Let's mount the base to the backboard and then I'll show you what we've got. And that's it. That is a monkey fist, Jake. Isn't that the sexiest piece of fine woodworking that you have ever seen produced on this show? No, it's not. What it is, is a very simple project, and we're going to get into tying of the monkey fists now. Um, you may have thought that first segment was a little bit rushed, and it was, because this isn't rocket science. It's a quick little jig to assist you in holding the core while making this particular project, which would be, in this show actually, a monkey fist. So what we're going to do now is I'd like to chat a little bit about this jig. This particular jig and what I've shown you here is a way to set the jig so that it is for one size of core. You can make this jig adjustable if you want by drilling more sets of holes for an inch core, an inch and a quarter, an inch and a half, etc, etc. Or on that X that you drew on that backboard, heck, you could even make those routed slots and have the rods come out so that they are adjustable within those slots to make it an, an infinite uh, amount or size of uh, variations of sizes for your core. Now, I know I'm using terms like core and monkey fist. You may not know what I'm talking about, but we're going to move over to the bench now that the jig is done. No more talking about the jig. And I'm going to show you how to tie a monkey fist and how to use the jig that we just made to make this paracord project. Well, now comes the fun part, and that is actually making the monkey fist. And we have our one inch marble, which will be the core of our monkey fist. And that will get placed in our jig just like that. I don't know how well this is going to translate to camera, but I'm going to try it and we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm using 550 paracord, which is the size of it for those of you who aren't aware of that. And I've measured off about eight feet here. And at the eight foot mark, now that your core or your marble is in the middle, we're going to do five wraps around our marble. And you just want to be careful here that you don't uh, twist things up or get the paracord doing this around each other. You want them in nice, neat rows and you want it to be able to lie flat against each other. Just take your time to five wraps, nice and neat kind of thing. And let me go, let me just count those. So one, two, three, four, five wraps. And hopefully you can see that there, that we've got the five with the marble in the middle. So now just take some time and neaten up all your little wraps and uh, then you can move on to the next step. So now that we have our five wraps, we're going to bring our live end that we were wrapping with and we're going to bring it around the bottom here and then we're going to come through the middle. Do you see that there? Right through the middle. And once we get that done, we need to do five more wraps, but around the assembly this way. So using our FID or our lacing needle that we made on last week's show, we're just going to bring our paracord in through the middle like that. You don't need to use a lacing needle, by the way. It just, I find that it makes it a little bit easier. And we're just going to make sure that everything's nicely tucked in there. And that's the one wrap. We're on wrap number two now. And 
in through with our lacing needle. See how much easier that is there with the, the lacing needle instead of messing around with the end of a piece of cord. Anyway, doesn't matter. Keep going and do five wraps, stacking them nice and neat from top to bottom. Or sorry, bottom to top. <laughs> Don't do top to bottom. That wouldn't be good. Just like that. So there's number three. So two more. And again, as you're going along, just check all your other wraps to make sure that you're not crossing any of them over because that will cause you problems afterwards if, uh, if you start crossing your paracord while trying to make the monkey's fist. And there we go, there's, <clears throat> there's five. And now that you have the five done, you can move on to the next step. So we have five wraps around this way and then five wraps around this way. What we're gonna do now is slide our fist to the end of the jig, not off, but just to the end. And we're just gonna neaten up a few of our wraps here to make sure everything's looking good. And what we wanna do is this is where I'm hoping it's going to translate to the camera. We're going to come in through here, straight in. So you're going in between your core and your outer wrap there. Just pull that through. And we're going to come in underneath and it will be between your core and your outer wraps. Right in through there and you want to do five of those. Again, making sure that we're not crossing things over. We've got a little bit of the par paracord bunching up right here, but I'm not too concerned about that because right now it's the jig that's stopping it um, from lying properly. Once we pull it off of the jig, we can make the adjustments to that and straighten them up before we start tidying and tightening the knot. So just carry on and do five wraps through the middle of this, uh, this monkey fist. And then when you get those five done, we'll move on to tightening the actual monkey fist, which can be a little bit of a tedious process but if you do it properly, it's well worth it. And there's number five. And at this point in time now, if you're happy with the way everything is sitting here, you can actually remove this from the jig and then we'll move on to the tightening. Well, it's now time to take the monkey fist out of the jig and it's not difficult. It's just slide it out just like that. And it doesn't look like much right now. In fact, it looks terrible, but at this point, you want to take the opportunity to arrange your wraps that you put in here because those dowels of our jig can cause the wraps to go out of their position. So you just want to shift a few things and make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be so that it will, as you tighten this now, it will lay flat and and work properly because if they start twisting on each other your monkey fist isn't going to work that's all there is to it it's going to look all crooked and lopsided so you just want to get in there and and work these ropes and and straighten this stuff out and make sure that all your wraps are in their proper order remember we were stacking them and this one here has somehow gotten twisted 
and we're just going to get in here and straighten it out before we go any further. There we go. See, it doesn't take much to straighten it out. You just got to pay attention to what's going on here with the whole, uh, the whole knot. Well, I've left the, the fid or the lacing needle attached and that is so that we know which end is which because we're going to start tightening this now and we're going to start tightening it by um, starting off with the second set of wraps that we did. Well, how the heck can you tell which is the second? Well, the third is the one that ends <laughs> with this. So that's pretty easy to tell. That would be this group right here. So then the next one, of course, would be this section. And then the last one would be the third one, which would be this. So we want to start on the second set of wraps at about the middle and just gently start pulling these pieces of paracord to get a loop and then keep going around and around till we can pull our slack out from this end and then reverse it and go back to pull all of the slack out from this end. Now you don't want to try to do this all at once. Um, you'll just end up with a mess. So we're kind of going to go in stages here and we're going to tighten it as we go and making sure that we're straightening things as we go because I can see I've still got a couple small twists and and kind of misaligned paracords here. So let me just see where I'm at um, as far as our wraps go. And yes, we're going to start here in the middle. And I've got a great big twist here, which I'm not too happy about. But we can fix that. That's no big deal. And I know it's probably not explaining this very well to you as far as how to tighten it. But it's one of those things that once you start playing with it, you'll really kind of understand what's going on. So on this second wrap here, you can see that we're, we're pulling the one paracord. Just going to pull out a little loop and that will afford us to pull another loop. You can see that there. And that one, of course, wraps around to here and we can pull that one. And then that will, of course, go over to this one here. We can pull that and we're not tightening a lot. We're just tightening it just a little bit just so that we can, you know, get it eventually all tightened. And it's very important here that as you're going that you want to be checking your uh, layout of your strands to make sure that everything is nice and aligned and they're lying flat and that you're able to sit them neatly beside each other as you're tightening this monkey fist down and it it does look like a jumbled mess right now but no really it's not it's just it's the process of tightening this that's all and as you tighten it of course it neatens itself up and as you go along you're making slight adjustments to make sure that it's lining up and that everything is lying properly much like right now, I had a little issue there, but with a little bit of patience, we can straighten that out and get everything laying in there beautifully, just like that. And you can see that all I'm doing is working my way around, pulling on each strand, starting with this second set of wraps that we did. And you can see here now I've arrived at the end, which goes back to my coil back here and we can just pull that back. Now that's the first half done. Now we want to get it so that we can tighten back to this wrap and we've got something funky going on here and one of our wraps has gotten twisted and that's no big deal. We can straighten that out. It just got to take your time and maneuver it and get the wraps lying nice and flat and nice and straight and eventually you'll get this done. It'll probably take you about three processes of tightening 
to get this the way that you want it, to get it nicely shaped and nice and tight. And uh, don't worry about that. That's just what it takes. Just don't try to do it all at once. You'll end up with one heck of a mess. So I will continue tightening this here and continue straightening it out. And when I start the second tightening process, I'll come back and see you and we'll show you how that's going. And there we have the first tightening process done. And it is still fairly loose. I can shift these around if I like. Um, but now you want to do the whole process again. So starting in the middle at your second set of wraps, work your way back um, around the, the middle of your second set, work your way back to eventually tug on this dead end here and then on your working end which is the end with your fid you want to start in the middle of your wraps and work the opposite way so that you're pulling the slack out of this one and that will be your second tightening and then uh, you want to do your third after that now i'm not going to sit here and film the tightening because um, i've shown you the process of how you do it and explained it and it is time consuming and it would be one hell of a boring video if you just watch me tighten ropes but I'll do another tightening and then I'll show you what it looks like after the second one and there we have stage two of the tightening done maybe I'll just pan away from this here for a second and show you a photo so that you could get a better idea of what this is looking like and uh, there's one more process of tightening and it is the last one, so I'm not going to bother sitting here and telling you it's the exact same process. Start in the middle of the second set of wraps, work back to the dead end, and then start in the middle of the second set of wraps and work back to the live working end, which has the fid or the lacing needle on it, and uh, tighten and pull and adjust and arrange and straighten out as you go. And by the end of that, you should have your completed monkey fist. And I will see you all when that is done. And with our third tightening process complete, we have our completed monkey ball. Now, or sorry, monkey fist. Now, it's a pretty cool looking knot. And uh, I'm sure I could have done quite a bit better than this. Um, and I wish I had cleaner hands because being out here in the shop, of course, everything gets a little mucked up with sawdust. But that's something to keep in mind for when you are working on yours. Now, it's a great little project, guys, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And there's a lot of things you can make with paracord. Uh, you know, everything from bracelets and water bottle uh, holders to, to even wallets and belts. I've seen a heck of a lot of stuff made out of paracord since I've started playing around with this stuff. So there you go. A monkey fist and a monkey fist jig. And there you have it. The monkey fist jig and the process of making a monkey fist. Um, guys, I am no expert at this stuff, and if you came here searching for a video uh, about uh, paracord and looking for the expert and the, uh, the, the know-it-all of the subject, you came to the wrong place. I'm just a guy that's branched out into something a little different than my normal show's uh, criteria and having a little fun with it along the way, and hopefully all of you guys out there are enjoying what I'm putting on the show and hopefully you're going to give it a try yourself because truth be told it is a heck of a lot of fun and although it just seems like not tying it's a lot harder than what it looks and uh, it's a lot more fun than what you think so guys I hope you're going to give it a try um, with last week's show with the uh, with the, the 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 needle for paracord and then this week's show with the monkey fist I hope you're enjoying it, and I hope you're going to join me again next week for yet another. I don't know if it's going to be woodworking or not, but another video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to see you next week.